this is amazing. Like, this is yeah. great. <laughs> I do wonder if he keeps the sunglasses or, like, what he does with the outfits afterwards. Like, if he's just renting them. I, I have so many questions about his outfits on a, on a regular basis. You know I feel like you – I don't know. Personally, if it were me, I would keep them because then you can mix and match different things, you know. Or right. if you just wait long enough, people might forgot that you were a giant, glittery – purple zebra suit <laughs> and maybe you could get away with wearing it again a year later <laughs> or if he's even smarter he lets wwe buy it then they could put it in this quote-unquote hall of fame that they're never going to create and then they could just say that oh on this night he wore this <laughs> that too that too just let someone buy it off of you that's funny <laughs> That way they can authorize it or uh, authenticate it. It would be totally okay. It still has his sweat inside of the fabric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or this one was ripped because Drew McIntyre beat him up and ripped his jacket. Yep, there you go. That one would probably even yeah. get, get over more because now you're putting another name on it. Exactly. Yeah, and then you just sell it on eBay and you're you're totally okay. <laughs> Well, so let's go forward in time a little bit. How did you make the decision that you wanted to give pro wrestling a shot? It's it's kind of funny how I ended up getting here. Um, there was a lot going on in my personal life that made me want to kind of sit down and reevaluate the direction my life was going. Um and this was around 2019 when it happened. So I was working in radio. I was a voice actor. And I used to be a competitive cheerleader. So there was a, a part oh. of me that missed. And when I say that, I don't mean like through a school or through a college. Like we did it through a gym and we threw people up in the air and we flipped and we, you know, uh, were in the gym working out conditioning four times a week, running routines and learning how to stunt, all of that. And there was just a really big part of me that missed having that athletic part of my life. Um, you know, and, and at the time when I sat down and started kind of thinking, I was in my late 20s and there had been a lot of what I, I, I would call not limitations but pressure on me throughout my life to – go to college, get a real real job, and all this other stuff. So it started getting to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm not getting any younger. Um, I felt like I had kind of capped myself in radio where, um, you know, radio is not as big as it used to be, and I was working on the morning show. I had my own afternoon show. And what a lot of people were calling, you know, making it in radio, and I just was not making – what I wanted to. I wasn't getting out of it what I thought I would. So um, I, you know, had, like I said, watched wrestling throughout my life on and off. And I was <laughs> binge watching Total Divas one night. And I just started thinking <laughs> uh, with, like, a lot of the personal stuff going on in my life, too, um, I needed to kind of find a way to break away, find my independence again, Find who I was again, like find that person that I used to be. And I started watching this, and I'm like, okay, some of these girls, they're, like, really good, but some of them, how? I'm not going to drop names, but, like, <laughs> how are they doing this? And it was kind of that, well, if this girl can pull it off and do it, I've got more athletic ability than that. Why can't I pull it off and do it, you know? So then I actually started – I turned off Total Divas, and I started actually watching wrestling <laughs> and and was watching more matches and getting more into it to see what they were doing. And uh, it just so happened that I'm one night scrolling through my Instagram while wrestling's on in the background, and Natalia puts up this post um, that she had visited a school in Knoxville called JPWA that was ran by Dr. Tom Pritchard. Mm. And she's like, I highly recommend anyone who's interested checking this out, yada, yada, yada. 
So I go to the website and I'm looking it up and everything. And um, they were taking new applications. So I went through the whole application process. You know, I took it very seriously. I, I made a an application video that showed off some of my athletic abilities, uh, got headshots, put together a little portfolio, submitted it all, and I was accepted. And it was kind of one of those things where it's like, I'm a believer in everything happens for a reason, and the universe pushes you in directions, and things happen to help move you to that next level. So if you follow the signs and you listen to it, you don't end up in this complacent state, if that makes sense. I love it, yeah. So I was kind of just like, you know what, this is all, it's it's happening, and I didn't think that it's something that would ever happen. Let's go with it and see where it takes me. So that's what I did. I ended up, you know, getting accepted. I, I did a temporary move to Knoxville, and I did my beginner's training under Dr. Tom Pritchard, and and uh, mm-hmm. it was it was amazing. It, it very instantly changed my life. Well, uh, I want to say, okay, walk us through that because I know Dr. Tom Pritchard is literally one of, I mean, I've heard it from so many different wrestlers that he is one of the best wrestlers ever and then one of the best trainers ever. Obviously, he worked in WWE. He had a hand in, you know, Kurt Angle, Edge, Christian, uh, many of those camps up there. What was it like, or I guess, did you do your research before you went in there as to who Dr. Tom Pritchard was? his impact, and then were you kind of like, you know, uh, a little bit starstruck when you first got in there? How, explain to me, or explain to us, like, how your first week kind of was, you know, internally. So, yeah, I did my research um, because after I, I, you know, looked up and, and found JPWA, I realized, which, you know, if you're not fully in that part of the world, you there's a lot you don't realize. So that was when it kind of clicked that, oh, wow, there's, like, schools and training all over the place. So I looked at different places. You know, I did some research before I chose where I went. I didn't just go on a whim because Natty told me to um, or because Natty put a post up saying to. It was more like, you know, I looked at Flatbacks. I looked at Black and Brave. I looked at all these different places, and I came to the conclusion that JPWA was where I wanted to go because of Dr. Tom. You know, I did do research. I did you know, dig into the coaches that ran each of the different schools. And um, the one thing that I loved about what they offered was that they offered promo classes on top of learning how to wrestle, where a lot of places just teach you how to wrestle. Then these wrestlers go out and they can't cut a promo to save their life. Um, Right. Which being in radio, media, the entertainment business prior to, you know, I've got 10 years on that front. Um, I understand how important it is to know how to work the camera, to know how to cut promos, to know how to do all of that other stuff. Like I understood before even going there that it's more than just what happens in the ring. And Dr. Tom offered all of that. So I was like, okay, this is where I'm going to go because it seems to be, you know, getting the most for your time. And um, my first week was crazy. <laughs> like, you know, we had this, this uh, student housing so that they offered so we could go, and there was, like, five or six of us, you know, complete strangers all on move-in day. So I guess this was, like, my version of going to college because I never, you know, I stayed local. I didn't go off to a university or anything like that. And, um, but these people ended up becoming, like, over the course of time, we got super close where we all are, like, brothers and sisters now. Actually, two of them just were at my house this weekend, uh, staying with me for one of the wrestling shows that was happening here in Cleveland. So, you know, we formed these, these lifelong friendships out of this. But it was so funny because I remember my first night, um, I, I had watched, wrestling I had kind of an idea of what was going on but I knew nothing about the move I didn't know what things were called I didn't know you know and we literally just like listened to Dr. Tom talk um the first part of the class you know went through a lot of what to expect out of the industry and things like that and then we worked walk-ups and that was really all it was we just went around taking turns locking up with different people of the class and 
I kid you not, it took me a good four months to learn how to do a decent lockup. And let's highlight decent because it wasn't even that great. So, <laughs> like, that was the night that I realized. I'm like, you think, oh, we're just putting our hands here and there. No, like, there's different things you got to keep in mind even when locking up. Like, if you put your head down, you're going to headbutt the person in front of you. You know, so it's just like – um that was, and we took our first bump the next day on day two oh, no. where, you know, we're up there and we just throw our backs down to the mat. So by the end of the week, everyone in the class, none of us, you know, who have really wrestled before, we're all walking around the student house and we're all sore and we're all laying on ice packs and nobody's moving uh, once Saturday came around, because Dr. Tom trains Monday through Friday. I mean, you're in that gym every day. If you're going there, you're going there. So Saturday rolls around, and we're all, like, not moving. It was the funniest thing ever looking back on it, though. <laughs> so I also read that you were trained by EC3. How did that come about? Yeah, I'm actually still currently working with him. Um oh, okay. He's great. I love him, by the way. We're just going to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> Tell him to come on the show. I've been trying to get him on. Oh, yeah. I uh, Well, I think you're talking to the right person. So. Hey, good. Fantastic. I can help you with that. Um, anyway, so that came about because, again, from working with Dr. Tom at JPWA, it was ironically this time last year um, I went down there for a couple weeks and was doing some advanced classes um, with some of the people and, you know, just trying to take my skills to that next level. And um, EC3 was coming through Tennessee around that same time doing a seminar at School of Morton with Ricky Morton and NWA. Now, I had already been working with NWA, but I started off, you know, I wasn't doing matches. I started off extras work, ring crew, working merch, pretty much doing anything that they needed me to behind the scenes. You know, I'd even go to Walmart and get water for the locker room, you know, things like that. Um, but I, I knew some of the people that were there that were putting it on. So we go to the seminar while I was in that, because that's still, it's, it's only about an hour away from Knoxville. So me and my friend, we go to the seminar, and while we were there at the end of it, you know, we went up, we're talking to him, we meet him, and then he – makes mention of um, wanting to come to JPWA the next day, which was really cool. So, um, <clears throat> like, while he was in that area. So it was, like, that Monday, I think it was either Monday or Tuesday, I think it was Monday, he comes in, and he did. He showed up to JPWA, and he trained with us that day. So, you know, he was there for the advanced training, and I actually got a chance to lock up with him in the ring, and we got to roll around a little bit. And um, this was still when I was learning, like I had mentioned before. I didn't know a lot of the moves. I didn't know um, how to do things. And if I don't know how to do something, like, I kind of get a little nervous until I know how to do it safely. And I think that comes from me being – a competitive cheerleader for so long where we are taught to just not do it if we don't know. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm locked up with him and we're, we're chain wrestling around the ring and he's trying to put me over. So he whispers to me, he's like, real quick, hit me with a stunner. And I look at him and I go, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> he's like, well, just do it how you think you do it. And I go, well, I, I don't want to accidentally hurt you. And he goes, oh, Jesus. And he just like, had me hit him with a DDT instead, which was really funny. Um, the whole that was like really my first real interaction with him. So afterwards, you know, we were talking, and I had known that he was from the Cleveland area. Mm. I did not know that he lived in the same city as me. So we we're oh. talking, and like at this point, he lives in Florida, and he men makes mention of wanting to come back to Cleveland. And I was like, oh, I, you know, like, because I had said I lived up there. And he was like, oh, well, I'm wanting to come home. And I said, oh, well, where from? I live in Willoughby. 
And he looked at me, and he's like, get out. I also am from Willoughby. And I was just like, <laughs> my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, this is insane. 